Hey, what's going on guys? Wireless Watch Lawn Service here. Back another video, and today guys, this video is actually not gonna be lawn care related. I know it's what my channel usually does, but a thing I like to do in wintertime, and something I wanna get into more, is actually flipping vehicles. Um, now this one isn't actually gonna be a flip. This is my dad's truck. Um, it's a 2003 Dodge Dakota. As you can see, it's uh, looking a little rough. We've got rust holes here, in the front quarter panel. Um, all down here is all rusted. The bed doesn't even match. It's missing uh, center caps on both front tires. The back bumper is pretty dang rusted. I mean, heck, the license plate light isn't even attached anymore. It's completely rusted off. And the uh, bed is rusting along the bottom here. So as you guys can see, this is a rough looking truck. And I actually want to fix this up and make it look a little bit more decent and have it be a little more presentable of a truck for my dad to sell. Um, this actually is his work truck. It was his beater truck and he's done with it and he listed it for a thousand dollars guys has 130,000 miles on it and no one was interested at all in it uh we listed it for a while and have had no interest it's a great running truck it runs fantastic no issues four-wheel drive works but i think the big thing is it looks like a piece of crap so uh the goal in this video series guys is actually going to be i'm going to be repairing this truck um redoing i'm going to paint the bed to match um I'm gonna plastic dip the wheels. I'm basically gonna try to make it look a little more rugged and a little more presentable to try to sell it to like some 19 or 20 year old guy like myself that is looking for like a hunting truck or just a kind of first vehicle. If you guys look inside here, as you can see, the interior is in fantastic shape. Um, it actually looked really rough earlier, but I uh, vacuumed it out and uh, wiped it down and now it looks like a really well presentable truck inside. And the same goes for the back seat here, guys. I got mats that don't match, but you guys can see everything is in fantastic shape. Really nicely all cleaned out. I already took care of the um, interior. I did not make a video on that because to me, interior stuff is not all interesting to watch. But I did want to make a video series on repairing a truck. Now, this is not going to be a complete how-to. I'm going to fix some of the stuff, what I think is the proper way. Um, but again, this is for a quick sale. So I'm not going to dump a lot of money into this and fixing it, guys, because when I list it, like we had listed for $1,000 before. So when I list it now, after everything I'm going to do to it, I'm probably going to list it for $2,500. Again, not that expensive of a vehicle to list, so people cannot expect it to be, you know, absolutely flawless. A lot of this is going to be making it look prettier, realistically. Now, another thing real quick that I want to mention is throughout this really mini-series I'm going to do on this truck, I do not want to see comments like, oh, you could have done this better, or this is how you should properly repair rust, or blah, blah, blah. Guys, we were trying to sell this thing for $1,000. It had no interest. I'm going to list it, fix it up, list it for $2,500. If people want to spend $2,500 on a vehicle, like me personally, I would not expect it to be decent. $2,500, I would expect it to have rust issues. So I'm just clean this up so someone can be proud, proud to drive it a couple years. Um, hopefully it'll be a starter vehicle for them and not for a forever vehicle. I can't imagine wanting to have this for a forever vehicle. Um, but again, I don't want to see comments like, oh, you could do this better. This is not the proper way to do that. You should do this. I can care less, guys. This is fixing this up to sell it, fixing it up to make it look pretty, and because I enjoy it, I know how to properly repair rust. I, I did it on my 2008 Nissan Titan. I properly sanded everything down, did paint over rust 15, and, and bondoed it, and did everything I could, and that was a proper way of going after things. I'm not gonna do that with this, guys. Um, I'm just gonna fix it up, make it look pretty, and make it pass inspection, basically. But anyways, just wanted to walk you guys around, take a quick look at the before of the vehicle, and you can see just how rough she looks. All right, so now you guys know the piece of junk I have to work with. Let's uh, start the video.
All right, guys, we got the truck in the garage now. It's been power washed off. And actually, it's been sitting in the garage now for about three days. I want it to really dry out good. I actually had a stove here running to keep the garage warm. There's about 70 degrees in here now, maybe 65, 70, somewhere in there. Uh, and so it's plenty warm, and it's been like that for the last couple days. So I've been drying it all off. Today's project, guys, is I'm going to be uh, sanding down and prepping the bed for paint. We'll see if I have time if I do end up painting the bed. Um, I'm going to also plan on plastic dip the wheels, but um, they're going to be plastic dip black. However, I'm waiting for uh, the center caps to come in. I have center caps on both back tires, but I don't have any of them for the fronts. Um, I'd rather just do them all at the same time. So once the center caps come in off eBay, I'll be able to dip the wheels. And sorry again, guys, about the poor lighting. Unfortunately, I'm working with what I have in this uh, little shop here or my garage, which is actually three separate layers here that have been built over time. Um, just kind of add it on. But anyways, I want to show you guys what I have to work with today. So we got some tape for masking stuff off when painting. I have more too. This is just what I have laying here. Um, I got my res respirator for painting as well as for the sanding process. Sandpaper and a sanding block for sanding. Uh, this is also what I can use for sanding. Put the sandpaper in there. And of course, lots of paper for taping off the truck. I'll also be using trash bags to tape off the truck as well. Alright, so with that, let's get to the sanding. Alright guys, so uh, I actually just went over this all with, uh, I think it was 120 grit, I want to say. It was fairly coarse, nothing too crazy. Now I'm actually going to use, uh, what is it, I think three or 400 grit, it's one of those two. And I'm going to go over it again. Um, as you guys can see, like where the clear coat was chipping and peeling here, it's all smooth. It doesn't matter how scratched up it is, because you want to be smooth to the touch for the finished product. Um, so, for example, all this clear coat where it was peeling here, you can feel the ridges and stuff. But now it's nice and smooth, and when I go over it again with the uh, higher grit, which is the more fine kind of sandpaper, um, it's going to make it even smoother, so it should look good. And I'm not worried if I scratch this thing up, because honestly, I'm probably going to plastic dip that to match the bumpers and the handles and stuff. Alright, so we got the sanding done with the uh, coarser grit and then now the finer grit. On this one side, I'm just showing you guys right now. But uh, as you guys can see, let me brush it off a little bit with my glove. But as you can see, uh, it's definitely nice and smooth to the touch. I got to get here a little bit more. I don't know. It's like a little lump there. But I mean, all this stuff here, I can take my glove off too. It's nice and smooth to the touch. And that's exactly what you want because you're not going to see any of the scratching once the paint's on. It's going to be nice and smooth and you won't see any uh, little you know, imperfections in the paint. Which, again, for this, it doesn't really matter that much. But still, it's good practice or I guess further practice, I should say. So I should still try to do a decent job. I'm just not going 110% with all my prep work and stuff. So I'm just worried about making it look a little bit nicer. Now, I don't know if you guys can see, but realistically, like this, here's the gap, gas cap. And realistically, if you guys are doing something like this for real and you can, you're going to want to take off the gas cap and pull that out so that you can try to prime and paint the interior the gas tank here as best you can and otherwise like for me I'm gonna have a silver truck open it up boom red which you guys can't see because of shadow but it's gonna be red inside there so it won't look as good which again doesn't really matter for something like this I don't think people are gonna care but um definitely something to note that if you guys are doing this in your vehicle definitely uh, go the extra step take this off and do inside the gas cap and now a quick message from the sponsor of this video 
Exter wallets. And if you guys have never heard of them, Exter is actually a wallet company that uh, focuses on smart wallets. Now with each wallet, you also get a tracker here. They actually are solar powered. You stick it out in the sunlight, gets battery, and I believe two hours of charging equals three months of tracking. So if you ever lose your wallet, you can use this sucker to find it. Now with this tracker, you actually can just, after you charge it up, you slip it right in the back of the wallet here and you're good to go. The wallet is very small, as you can see, used in the side of my hand. It's a relatively small wallet. Um, it's meant to put cards in. If you see this little button down here in the corner it actually makes your credit cards pop out it's very convenient because you can do it one-handed use pop that out and get your credit card and give it to a cashier or whatever you want to use now this wallet's not going to be for everyone but it definitely is for the minimalists out there if you carry very little cash on you that's what this little slip here is for all you gotta do is take the cash slip it down in the slip here and boom you're good to go so real quick guys this is the extra parliament 3.0 i have it in the classic brown uh very nice little wallet guys very simple uh definitely for the minimalist out there if you guys are one uh Lots of sweet little features and huge shout out to Extra actually for sponsoring today's video. Really appreciate it guys. If you guys are interested in picking one of these wallets up, be sure to use discount code LAWN15 down in the description below and check it out for 15% off your order. Also, I'll put down in the description below their website so you guys can check that out as well. Once again guys, huge thanks to Extra for sponsoring today's video and with that, let's get back to the video. Alright guys, so now I'm moving on to the back tailgate uh, for sanding and I wanted to go over real quick what I got to work with. Um, I can only record like this. You can see I have no room to work here, so I um, can't even get a camera in. I can barely get the light thing in. But anyways, um, we got rust really bad right here, right along the bottom. Um, very minor spot right here, super minor right there. And then, again, this is actually really, really bad right here. Um, but thankfully, they'll hang on it and stuff. Like, the metal is still solid, which is good in both spots. Um, so I was debating using paint over rust 15, which is like a sludge for um, for preventing rust. And you literally just take a paintbrush and just paint it on or sponge it on however you want. And it seals it in after you sand it down and stuff a little bit. Um, however, after some more thought and talking to my parents about it, they want me to save that for a future project, which is my dad's Jeep Wrangler, and not use it for this. Um, so we're going to save it for my dad's personal vehicle, uh, which I'm doing soon. So what we're going to do with this is I'm going to sand it down with a wire brush here, just kind of go along, sand as much down as I can. Um, and then we're actually going to rhino line it, like bed liner, just like the bumper here. And I haven't decided yet if I'm going to go up to the, uh, this little, uh, I don't know if you guys can see that, there's little lines here. I haven't decided if I'm going to go up to the first line or the second one. Second one would definitely cover all this existing stuff and anything that could come in the future for a little while. Um, but the first one would definitely, I think, look the nicest. Just having one little strip that'll tie into the bumper, it really wouldn't look bad at all. Alright guys, so now that I have the whole bed sanded, both sides and the tailgate, everything done up the way I want it to and smoothed out, uh, what you're actually going to do with the sanding stuff is, like, for me personally, I'm going to take some wet water, just a bucket of hot water, wipe everything down, um, get all the dust off, and then after it dries, I'll actually go back and I'll wipe it again, but this time with rubbing alcohol, pick up some of the contaminants and make sure everything's super clean and ready for paint. Alright guys, so I have everything prepped, I've done everything I need to for this, um, so now I'm actually going to paint it, I know it's the part you guys have been waiting for, and I'm curious to see how this uh, perfect match duplicolor turns out. Um, I was looking up online, and this is supposed to be just a hair lighter than the factory coat, which is what I want, because 
I would imagine with this thing being 2003, it probably faded a little bit. So I figured that uh, having a little bit lighter of a coat on it would probably actually make it match a little better. So we'll see how it works out, but uh, let's get to the painting. Thank you.